Hello everybody, it is Wowman here, and welcome back to the Explained series. And in today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Mandela catalog because you guys won't stop bothering me about it. All jokes, all jokes. This is actually a very great series, and I'm honestly very excited to be covering it as... I feel like I say that for all my videos, but I, I'm always excited, okay? So the Mandela Catalog is a very new series with its first episode barely coming out like three months ago. And really quick, if you do like videos about breaking down analog horror series, I'm your guy because I do cover these kinds of series all the time. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. In the first episode, it's an altered tape of the story of the birth of Jesus. An angel comes down and visits the Virgin Mary. And in the original story in the Bible, the angel Gabriel told Mary about the birth of Jesus. However, in this version, the name is redacted. And shortly after the angel does meet with Mary, he gives her an encoded message that's in binary. And if we do decode this binary message, we get this message from the angel. I'm the one who will save you. I must go first and do Joseph is next. And that's when Mary says, whatever God wants, I'll do. Whatever God wants, I will do. And shortly after, an entity is seen whispering the following to Joseph while he sleeps. I will fool the shepherds. I will know their greatest fear. I will know your greatest fear. Wake up, Joseph. And you can see its face in the mirror. Then the entity appears in the sky similar to an antichrist speaking to the shepherds. I am your true savior. I know everything about what makes you human. I know what you love. I know what you dread. And what's really interesting is that if we actually dive into the transcript of the video, this actually doesn't, um, play out in words, but it's hidden in the transcript. We actually get this hidden poem that's not in the original video. How frozen I became, and powerless then. Ask it not, reader, for I write it not, because all language would be insufficient. I did not die, and I alive remain not. Think for thyself now, hast thou aught of wit. What I became, being of both, deprived. So after a bit of research, this poem was actually written by Dante Alighieri. And Dante Alighieri was a 12th century Italian poet. And Dante Alighieri was most notable for writing the book called The Inferno. So just really quick, I'm gonna give you guys the spark notes of that book because it is a little bit relevant, so I thought you guys should know. So the concept of the book Inferno is about Dante's experience lost in life and literally in the woods. That's when a poet guide named Virgil finds Dante lost in the woods and tells him that he will guide him. Together they both journey the circle of hell, visiting all nine sections of hell, and even speak to the victims and learning their sins. Then they finally reach Lucifer, the king of hell himself, and see that in the deepest layer of hell it is a frozen, icy landscape. And at the end of the book, Alighieri actually emerges from all nine layers and makes it to the surface, and the book ends with Dante Alighieri having experienced all nine layers of hell. And this quote from the book Inferno is from when Dante Alighieri actually saw the devil and he's describing how he felt when he saw him. Soon after, the following message is displayed in the black sky. However, what's very interesting is that there are two messages being conveyed, one in red text and then there is one in white text. Can't you see? I deceived them. Such. And then as for the white text, it reads, I am bound to chains on my ankles that grow heavier with each step. The infinite amount of sand will be my tomb, and my foolishness will be my legacy. If there is a god, please help me. So the reason for a two-color text is to distinguish two characters speaking. The red text is representative of the entity who was whispering to Joseph as he slept. 
the entity saying that he has successfully deceived the shepherds into believing that he is God. And as for actually distinguishing what this entity is, I do highly believe that this entity is the Antichrist. And this is based off of the reference to Inferno by Dante Alighieri, as well as the entity's interaction with Joseph. And for those of you unfamiliar with the Antichrist, there are a few iterations and interpretations of what the Antichrist actually is. For example, in John 2.22 in the Bible, it states that, Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. However, in other verses, it does state that the Antichrist is a spirit at work opposing God and that that spirit exists in the world right now and is trying to deceive us. So the entity that does deceive Joseph and the shepherds could be a representation of the Antichrist. Because in the traditional story of the birth of Jesus, the angel Gabriel tells Mary about the birth of her child to come, Jesus, which is the Son of God. And when Mary had the child, she was alongside Joseph, the shepherds, and three wise men. However, in this version, Joseph and the shepherds were deceived by this Antichrist figure. Episode 2, The Think Principle In episode 2, things do take a different approach. The video is a message from the United States Department of Temporal Phenomena, which released in 1981. And if we look at the logo, the logo is in the shape of a clock, saying Tempus Fugit, which is Latin for it escapes irretrievable time. So Tempest Fugit pretty much means that time flies and there's no way to get it back. Pretty strange to have on a government logo, but I did want to mention it in case it does become relevant in future videos. And what follows is a broadcast. The broadcast states that there have been several reports of unidentifiable hostile organisms, and they refer to them as alternates. And the broadcast does state that the government does not have a complete understanding of the organisms and how big of a threat they actually are, stating that citizens should remain home, lock their doors, and have an access to a firearm at all times. It's important to stay home, lock all doors and windows, and have access to a loaded firearm or any ranged weapon at all times. And according to the broadcast, alternates can look identical to you, or have biologically impossible features. And some examples of this are an enormous head and extremely long arms. And the broadcast does mention that alternates will use psychological warfare on their victims. And this is very similar to when we saw the Antichrist trying to deceive Joseph and the shepherds. So we can assume that these alternates are doing the same thing, trying to deceive their victims. Then the video goes on to describe the THINK procedure, which is the procedure that citizens are to use in case they encounter an alternate. Tell an authority figure about your encounter, hinder the alternate's movements, identify the class type, neutralize, and the final step is to get rid of yourself. And right below that it says, there's not enough room for the two of us. The tape glitches and it says, know your place in reality. And from this glitch, we can assume that either the Antichrist or an alternate has actually corrupted this tape and made it say these things, such as to off yourself and to know your place in reality, and that there's not enough room for the two of us. That's three things, I meant to say three. And what follows are the three types of alternates. Doppelgangers, which have the exact appearance of their victims. Detectable, which is the entity that deceived Joseph and the shepherds. And there is type 3, which does not have a name but refers to the alternates that have impossible biological features which are displayed in the tape. The final shot of the broadcast is what a type 3 alternate looks like. And this one has made its way into someone's home. It does seem likely that the entity could be in control of the alternates that are terrorizing people of 1981. And as for a potential reason of why the entity would even do this, a potential motive could be that the entity is trying to get rid of those who oppose him and replacing them with doppelganger alternates who will follow in its footsteps, praising it as a god. Episode 3, The Mandela Catalog volume one for the first part of this episode we do get the same thing from the last episode about the broadcast and the different types of alternates but in the middle of it it does cut out and we do get this conversation from two people named mark heathcliff and caesar torres 
and they are both labeled as victims one and two. The conversation goes as follows. Hey, it's Caesar. I hope it's not too late. No, it's fine. Don't worry. What's up? Are you right? Yeah, it's not me. It's my mom. She's knocked out cold and I have no idea why. I'm on my way to the ER, but could you do me a favor? Yeah, of course. What is it? Uh, I just need you to come over and turn on the cameras we have set up. You know the ones that we installed after we were robbed? Oh, yeah. Would you mind if I asked why? Well, she screamed really loud right before I found her on the ground. I... I just... Well, do you have your doors and windows locked? Like what the broadcast told us to do? Yeah, that's the weird part. Maybe she saw something? I don't... I don't know. Alright. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna switch them on and get out of there, though. You know how I feel about your house. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, I gotta go. I'm almost at the hospital. Thank you. So, based off of this conversation, there are a few things to note. Firstly, it doesn't seem that Mark and Caesar are really close friends, but rather it seems like they are neighbors or at least live in the same vicinity based on how they talk to each other. Mark says things like, would you mind if I asked why? And Caesar saying things like, hey, it's Caesar. I hope it's not too late when he first calls Mark. Hey, it's Caesar. I hope it's not too late. So it does make me think that they aren't really that close, but are rather acquaintances uh, slash neighbors. And Caesar is just asking Mark for a favor. They also do talk about the broadcast saying that they need to lock their doors and windows. And Caesar mentions that his mom screamed really loud before she fell in the ground. And now he needs to take her to the hospital. Going as far to even mention that she may have even saw something. Maybe she saw something? I don't, I don't know. And the thing that she saw was this alternate from the last episode. So this entire sequence at the end of the last episode was from the perspective of Caesar's mother, which directly leads to this conversation that's happening right now. So shortly after, Mark agrees to the favor and goes to Caesar's house to turn on the cameras. And we receive this audio log that was recorded at 5.34 a.m. Get away from me! And we can assume that this voice is from Caesar's mother when she first saw the alternate. Get away from me! Then a message from Mark appears on screen saying, It followed me home, Caesar. And that's when we hear an alternate trying to deceive Mark from outside of his room. I have a gift for you. you, you. I have a present. I have a surprise. Mark says two things. I do not want to see what is on the other side, but it's been days and nobody has come to help me. And that's when Mark finally loses it and is forced to open the door and attempts to shoot the alternate. But the alternate survives and says, bad decision, Mark. And based off the operator on the phone, Mark has been trying to call the authorities for several days. Utilizing the part of the think technique that the broadcast told him to do. But nobody answered and nobody came. Having been stuck in his room with no food or water, Mark did the only thing that he could do and tried to kill the alternate. But unfortunately, he failed and was killed in cold blood. Nobody came for me. The next piece of footage that we do get is from the Mandela County Police Department training video. Noted this is illegal footage that only authorities are allowed to see. But the strange part happens when it describes what to do when somebody is calling about an alternate encounter. Do not help a call or report an alternate encounter. No matter how frantically you scream door, call me, reassure, and call me that help is on the way. The call can be ended when it's stopped responding to your questions. Do not speak too much. You might accidentally reveal your fear. And the closing statement is, nothing is worth the risk. 
Nothing is worth the risk. Nothing is worth the risk. Nothing is worth the risk. And based off of the first broadcast dated 1981, and Mark's encounter with the alternate dated 1982, alternates have been around for at least a year. And so authorities have made the decision to never help anybody calling about an alternate encounter. Instead, they tell 911 operators to deliberately lie to callers and to leave them for dead. Because according to them, it's just not worth the risk. And based off of Mark's encounter with an alternate, a bullet from a handgun is not enough to kill an alternate. And in this point in the series, we don't even know if it's even possible to kill an alternate. In the original broadcast, it says that you may attempt to execute an alternate yourself, but this could just be the government giving people hope that it's possible to kill an alternate, when in reality, it's simply not. The last segment of the third episode is a toddler stress assessment video. It's pretty much telling parents to record their child's response to the following media, but that's not really that important. What's really important is when the video cuts and we get this story created by Mark, the same Mark that was trapped by an alternate and died in 1982. However, this story was created by Mark when he was only four years old. Mark tells a story about a night that his dad didn't check under his bed, so he went to his mom's room because he heard knocking on the door. And as he approached his mom's room, that's when he saw a man in the corner, and then he just fell asleep, and that's how the story finishes. So I do have a big theory of what's going on here, so get ready. So what I think happened is that Mark used to live in Caesar's house, when he was a kid, of course. But then he moved out somewhere else, somewhere nearby, because he still lives nearby the house. But that's when Caesar and his mother moved into Mark's old house. And this would explain this piece of dialogue that Mark tells Caesar. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna switch them on and get out of there, though. You know how I feel about your house. The reason he feels so off-putted by Caesar's house is because it was the same house that he saw an intruder in his home. However, what's strange is that Caesar says the reason that he installed these security cameras in his house is because one night he was actually robbed. Uh, I just need you to come over and turn on the cameras we have set up. You know the ones that we installed after we were robbed? Robbed in the same house that Mark saw an intruder in when he was four years old. And this does bring us to the next episode, which does explain the origins of the intruder and why it's in Mark's old home and Caesar's current home. Hello everybody, so just quick break, I just wanted to ask you, have you ever considered starting a YouTube channel? Well boy, do I have something for you. TubeBuddy is a free Chrome extension that helps you with all your YouTube needs. And the thing that I use most with TubeBuddy is the Keyword Explorer, which helps you get tags for your videos because that is actually really important when it comes to pushing your video into the algorithm. So the Keyword Explorer will tell you which tags are best and it will rank them from perfect to horrible. And if you did want upgraded features like thumbnail generators and keyword searching, prices range from pro to star to legend and each subscription has its own perks. And what's really great is that if you do have less than a thousand subscribers, you get 50% off of your pro membership. So it's really just a great deal if you are starting off on YouTube. But yeah, be sure to use my link at tubebuddy.com slash wowman. Again, that's tubebuddy.com slash wowman. And that will be in the description. All right, back to the video. Episode four, intruder alert. Episode four starts off with the intruder from the last video saying, I am in your home. I am inside your home. And what follows is a Mandela County child endangerment awareness video. The video talks about child safety and most importantly, tells parents to be cautious about what their children are watching. And then we see this image of the intruder on the television. We also get a message that says, they exist on a different spectrum. This of course referring to alternates so perhaps that's the reason why when Mark shot the alternate, it had no effect. Because the alternates don't exist on the same spectrum as humans do. The video states that if you hear your child screaming or crying in front of a television, to wait until they stop crying until you enter the room. If you hear your child screaming or crying in front of the television, wait until your child stops making noise before entering the room. You the mother in the video approaches the TV the infant was watching, and on screen is the intruder. And that's when the woman decides to live no longer, with text that states, distraught at the sight of her missing infant. In the next segment of this video, a televised alert is issued to multiple counties, 
stating that as of right now, 3,426 children have gone missing in four counties, Bythorn, Herksha, Yonder, and Mandela County. The alert also states to keep vulnerable children away from any television or medium that could project possibly frightening imagery. So it seems like the intruder is a similar entity to the entity that we saw in the first episode that we identified as the Antichrist. But this entity has the ability to steal children from simply displaying an image of itself on a TV. The next segment is about a self-destruct investigation. After receiving neighboring noise complaints of prolonged childlike crying, followed by a loud crack, an investigator was sent over to survey the home form of photos and video. After taking the previously shown photo, the investigator reported feeling an overwhelmingly sense of dread and left the scene immediately. In order to provide security until another investigator was available, an on-site officer volunteered to set up a camera that took one photo every five minutes facing the room that the event occurred in. And this is when we get a look at the intruder facing the camera which was set up in the darkness as if it knows the camera's there and is taunting the police. In the next image, the victim's corpse is seen being tampered with by an invisible force. And based off of this, we know that the intruder can in fact turn invisible and can interact with the physical world that we live in, even though it exists on a different spectrum. The conclusion of the report is as follows. The suspect shown in the evident images is completely Said images will be sent to the higher ups for further analysis. So the intruder is not an alternate and is a separate entity on its own. And the final episode, which was released a week ago, is titled Metaphysical Awareness Disorder, Volume 2 Teaser. So this is only a teaser, but it does have a lot of information that can back up a lot of the theories that we already have. The video states that the metaphysical awareness disorder has increased by 95% as of 1982, a year after alternates came into existence in 1981, even stating that the self-destruct rate of a MAD victim is currently 97%, with a very low survival rate of 3%. And based off of the tape, the way that a person contracts MAD is a result to exposure to verbal information that is not desired to be known. And off of the video, this information is given to victims by whispering to them. And we have seen this on two occasions already. The first is when the intruder whispers that he is in your home at the beginning of the third video. And the second is when the Antichrist whispered to Joseph's ear as he slept in the first episode. The final message is as follows. Avoid opening your eyes when you are certain that the man in the corner is in fact now inches away from your face, watching. The Mandela Catalog is about a crisis humanity is facing, beginning with the birth of Jesus. An entity, presumably the Antichrist, deceived Joseph and infected him with a mental disorder known as MAD, which has a self-destruct rate of 97%. Soon after, the same entity deceived the shepherds that were supposed to be present at the birth of Jesus. Centuries later, in 1981, a new hostile organism arose, known as alternates. There are three types, doppelgangers, detectable, and type 3. Citizens are to stay in their homes, lock their windows and doors, and most importantly, avoid alternates at all costs. However, the alternates are so dangerous that the authorities decide to never help anyone that has an encounter with an alternate. And instead, if a person dials the authorities, they will simply lie to them and leave them for dead. The only people that we have seen encounter alternates are Caesar's mother and Mark. Caesar's mother was taken to the hospital after her encounter with an alternate because she is now suffering from MAD, and Mark was later killed by the same alternate. As alternates continue to massacre individuals, an entity known as the Intruder is stealing children in four counties that we know of. 3,426 children have gone missing in four counties. The Intruder, alternates, and the Antichrist 
have started what seems to be the end times. And that was the Mandela catalog explained. Oh my god. Also, I'm very curious if you were in a room with an alternate, an intruder, and the Antichrist, who would you dap up first? Personally, I would dap up the Antichrist. I mean, he'd probably possess me or kill me like two seconds later, but when I'm in like the spirit realm, I can say to the other spirits, they're gonna ask me, how did you die? And I'm gonna tell them, I freaking dapped up the Antichrist and he got so mad that he just offed me. So yeah, who, who would you dap up? I, I have my pick. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I will be keeping up to date with this series. As soon as new episodes come out, I will be covering it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, also check out my Twitter. Look at this funny, is this the right? Look at this funny meme I posted. But yeah, I'll see you later. Love you. Take care. You're awesome. Very beautiful person. And, um, uh, yeah, I'll see you.